and, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, so yeah. the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on a highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along, doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. There's no turbo lag or jerkiness or anything like that. No driver input needed. It's smooth, both in terms of acceleration and deceleration for regen. It's uh, really cool happening all behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, what I find actually really wild about this is that uh, you can have a, a truck um, which is 82,000 pounds, and uh, by the way, the re reason we can actually do 82,000 pounds is that there's a 2,000 pound extra uh, that's allowed by law for electric trucks. So you get a little bit of an uh, advantage on the, uh, on the, on the weight side. Um, but you can, you can basically pull 82,000 uh, pounds uh, on, at cruise using, to, and the only thing that's doing that is a tiny little motor so on one axle. Oh, that big. Well, football size, maybe? Yeah, yeah you Something can else. carry it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a, you know, melon, I mean, You, you can basically. check it in your luggage. Good luck doing that with a diesel engine. And one of those is more powerful than a diesel. Yeah. Yeah, just that, just that one little guy is, is more powerful than a regular diesel engine on, on a, on a semi-truck. Um, but it's just, I find it, like, amazing that this enormous thing can be pulled by something that you could carry in your hands. It's like, wow, that's power density. Yeah. So. so yeah, and then in terms of, you know, we're putting this to use in the real world. Yeah. So that, that truck's clocking it at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. This is, yeah, this is where it comes in. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's like driving a, a normal car, not like driving a truck. Um, you, it's just that you're, you're moving 82,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, a, a, any highway grade you come across, you can tackle at speed. Yeah. You know, there's no compromise. No slowdown. Nope. And the other beauty is that you've got all this power going up, but you also have it going down. And what that means is you've got regenerative braking. So rather than using a jake brake or engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runaway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road because there's no gear to miss. Yeah. I mean, just it's worth reemphasizing that point. Um, because it's an electric uh, drivetrain, when it goes downhill, you actually, or when you slow down, it recaptures um, the energy of motion or the energy of, 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 of height. The, the potential and kinetic energy are largely recaptured, uh, whereas for a diesel truck, that's not possible. You can't just you know, create diesel. So it, it, you just end up heating brakes. And, and then your brakes overheat, and you can't use them. And then it, it's actually quite, it's pretty dangerous because the brakes stop working. Yeah, that's why you have runaway truck ramps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's funny because, so if for any of you that have ever driven I-80 and driven Donner, there's a mandatory brake check stop for trucks down by Emigrant Gap. We've done this, and it's really funny because we'll go over the grade, we'll come down, and we just kind of pull to the side and we're like, well, there's nothing to check. We've never used the things, and we just keep driving. Yeah. Yeah. And we get to the bottom of the hill, we have cold brakes. Yeah. <laughs> That's like mind-blowing in the trucking world. So it's like insane, basically. Uh, and, and you, yeah, so. So it's, it's really worth emphasizing that that's a significant safety improvement for the truck driver and for other people on the road. Um, and and the, we also have um, excellent traction control because the precision of an electric motor